In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the cut-in and cut-out pressures on a well pump pressure switch. This is a very standard switch that we have here. Uh, it's a square D, this particular one is, which is definitely the most common. Uh, and we've got a couple different things that we can do in here. Now this is actually a manual start switch. So when you first turn this on, you actually have to lift this lever just a little bit in order to get it to turn on for the first time. But once you do, it's going to work automatically. It's about to come on actually right now. There you go. You see it comes on there at 30. Because this is a 30-50 pressure switch. So it comes in at, on at 30 and it cuts out at 50. Now when I first installed this pressure switch, it was not... Uh, quite cutting in and out where I wanted it to. So I'll show you uh, what we did in order to fix that. Most of the time I'd recommend getting a pressure switch that does not have this feature, but this one has an auto start and off position for this little lever on the side of it. Now normally we'd have this thing in place before we start it, but in order to be able to see it, I'm gonna leave it off. And basically, this little lever right here, we have to lift it just far enough that it starts and then we release it back to the auto position. So here we go. So now we're back to the auto position. I just really, I just lifted it far enough so that it would start. And now it's just gonna pressurize until it hits the set point, which it looks like it cut out there at about 45. So it's a little bit low actually. I might actually increase that set point a little bit. And in order to do that, turn nut number one to raise cut on and off. Turn nut number two to raise off pressure only. Real quick question, why are you adjusting the pressure on your well pump? Comment down below and let me know what pressure range do you run in right now and why are you adjusting it if you are indeed adjusting it? These terminals right here are live, 240 volts, and you oftentimes are in an environment that has good continuity to ground. So you got to be super careful when you're adjusting this and what you really should do is turn off the well uh, completely when you make your adjustments and then and verify that it is off then make your adjustments then turn it back on and see where your set points are at. The easiest way to adjust the pressure is going to be with a 3 8 inch deep socket like this. Basically we tighten this screw right here in order to increase the cut off pressure, so that's just to raise the top end pressure, and you tighten this middle one if you want to raise the cut in and cut out pressures. Now we're very carefully going to increase this one. That's about a half a turn. Now we'll see what that does. And now we're going to do like two full turns on this one. One, two. We'll see where we end up with that. So hopefully we'll cut in at really close to 30 or a tiny bit above even. There we go, perfect. And then since we increased this screw by two turns, our cutout should be a little bit higher. Bada bing, bada boom. That's pretty much perfect. So as you can see, we adjusted those two screws and we're able to make it so that it was cutting in at 30 and out at 50. So this thing is exactly set up the way we want it to. The reason it's going up and down right now is we do have a yard hydrant turned on. But yeah, in summary, this middle screw right here raises your cut in and cut out pressures together. So by tightening this screw, uh, it's going to um, increase that cut in pressure. So if it was 30, if we were to turn it one turn, it'd be like cut in at 32, cut out at 52. And then this screw over here only raises the cut out pressure. So if we just wanted it to be, you could even have it do 30, 60, or if you wanted to, then you would just increase the tension on this screw and you could adjust it until you hit the appropriate amount of pressure. Now, if you do adjust the pressure settings of your pressure switch, you also need to adjust the air pressure inside of your well pressure tank. So in order to do that, you'll have to have all the water drained out of the tank, and then you'll wanna set that air pressure at the top of the tank there to two PSI less than your cut in pressure. So in this case, we have it set to 30 PSI. Therefore, we need to set the air pressure 
228. Now I would mention that you should actually set that air pressure in the tank a little bit lower if you do have one of these manual start uh, pressure switches like we have in this video. So I, in that case, I would actually recommend a cut-in pressure of 25 PSI because if you have that pressure too close to your cut-in pressure, uh, basically the way these uh, manual cut-in switches work, if you do ever uh, basically run out of water in the tank to where you temporarily have a low pressure event, that pressure switch will shut itself off and will not restart until you manually lift that lever. And by giving yourself a little bit more margin between your cut-in pressure and the air pressure in your tank, that's going to mitigate any possible issues with it basically tripping out when it's not supposed to. So make sure you adjust the pressure in your pressure tank uh, if you do adjust the cut-in pressure of your pressure switch. One nice thing about this type of switch is that you can put it all the way up into the off position if you want to just manually turn off the well pump while you are down in the well pit. Because a lot of times you don't have a proper disconnect in the well pit like this, which hopefully most of you don't have a well pit anyway. Comment down below if you still have a well pit. I'd be really curious to hear about it. Now I did want to give an honorable mention to the fact that this is one of the worst well houses that I've ever been in, in my entire life. And I highly recommend not having a well house like this. And this definitely needs a lot of work. A wood basement on a well house like this is just absolutely terrible. Well pit, in fact. And actually the reason I'm here today is that this, uh, well pit flooded, filled up the water so the sump pump wasn't working and uh, ruined the pressure switch. Some water probably ran back down the well casing, which means it probably needs to be sanitized. And so yeah, it's just a huge bummer. That's why by code now, uh, or when they drill new wells, the top of the well casing cannot be down here. It needs to be extended up above the surface so you don't have any chance of the uh, groundwater or surface water running down into the water table. I actually have a well pit at my house, but it's a much nicer one in that it's got a good concrete floor and uh, cinder block walls, so it's not all that bad of an environment compared to this disaster. All right, let me get out of here. I'll put a couple of videos here on the screen about wells specifically in case you guys need to continue the troubleshooting process, and we'll see you right over there. See, closes it.